Hey, what's up? I am Michelle B. This is Channel Notes, a channel dedicated to helping you to thrive on YouTube. And in this video, I want to dive deep into some of the reasons that people may not be watching your videos on YouTube. When I first started making YouTube videos, I felt like this was a question that I was constantly asking myself. Like, why are people not watching my content? <laughs> You put all of this effort into putting out these videos, your consistency is on point, but people just aren't clicking on them. Why are people not watching? So in this video, I'm going to talk through a few reasons that people may not be watching your videos and then also some changes that you can make to rectify those things and to get more people clicking on your videos on a weekly basis. So the first reason that people may not be watching your videos is because your content is scattered. This one is really close to my heart because it's one of the main reasons that my main Main channel struggled so much in those early years. My content was everywhere. I was doing lookbooks, hauls, DIY videos, makeup videos, and I just like chucked it under the label of lifestyle. I think this one is a bit of a controversial one because you see a lot of bigger YouTubers and they kind of just do whatever they want and it works, but you've got to realize that at the end of the day, those YouTubers are huge and it's likely that people come back more so for their personality. Making content that's varied can work when people are coming back for you, for your personality but that relationship takes a while to build. And when you're smaller, it is much easier if you have a stronger focus point. There are also plenty of other great reasons to choose a tight niche on YouTube. I made an entire video about it. I'll have it linked up here and down below. But for now, just trust me, if you wanna build a sustainable audience earlier on in the game that provides value and isn't just around your personality, a niche is going to serve you really well. You've gotta look through the lens of a person that is just finding your channel. So perhaps they found you through a what I eat in a day video. And then they visit your channel and they realize that you have videos about mental health and you do hauls as well. Kind of make videos about everything. So they might then subscribe for the eating videos, for the food related videos. But when they see your videos pop up on how to style your hair or the stigma behind mental health, it's unlikely that they'll click on those videos. They subscribe for one thing and they're getting another. I would highly, highly, highly suggest going through my playlist on how to narrow down your niche. I just think it's so important in the long run. One thing I will say though is is don't get too caught up in it when you're early. Think of your first year or your first few years on YouTube as just a big old experiment. Try a bunch of different niches and see what works for you. Don't think that just because you choose one niche you're tied to it by any means. The second reason that people are not watching your videos is because you're not growing or transforming. So this is really relevant if you've been on YouTube for a little while and maybe your views are dropping. I actually went to a YouTube event specifically about this topic. They talked about how all sustainable, long-lasting channels have had big periods of growth or transformation and changes. For example, if you look at Shane Dawson and you look at his first videos first now, it's completely different, totally different vibes, but he's thrived. If you look at Aspen and Parker, a completely different type of channel, Sure, the content may be slightly similar, but if you look at their lives and how much change has happened, Aspen is pregnant, they have a new house, I've been really keeping up with Aspen and Parker lately. Life is wild and everything is different for the viewers. So there's been a lot of transformation, a lot of change in the period of time that viewers have been watching. At that event, they showed a really good video of a YouTuber and he was talking about why he no longer watches the YouTubers that he used to watch. And the answer was that when he went onto their channels and he opened one of their videos, it was the exact same as the videos that he watched three, four years ago. And I think that's something that happens with a lot of YouTubers. It's easy to get into a rut when it comes to the videos that you're uploading on YouTube, especially when what you've done has worked really well in the past. But people are going to get bored of watching what can feel like the same thing over a long period of time. If you feel yourself falling into a rut similar to that, pick a few YouTubers, probably in different niches to your own. Watch a bunch of their videos and try and think of like how you can take aspects of what they're doing and pull it onto your channel, what kind of formats can you try that other YouTubers from different niches are doing that you think could work really well on your channel? Think about different ways to edit, different ways to present your content. Transformation absolutely doesn't need to happen instantly. It can happen in small baby steps so long as you are changing and you are growing. The next one is a super obvious one, but also super important. You're not putting enough effort into your titles or your thumbnails. This one is huge because a good title and a good thumbnail can make a literal world of difference. Before you even start creating a video, sit down and brainstorm at least 15 different titles for that video, and then pick the one that is the most clickable. Something I like doing is going onto headline idea articles or going onto other YouTube channels and kind of copying like the format of other titles and using them 
for my own videos. For example, if I see an article titled 99 ways to get seriously organized and I feel like that's a really clickable title, I can take that and I can change it into 10 ways to get serious views on YouTube. It's a bad example, but you get what I'm saying. Thumbnails are incredibly important because they're a place for you to tease the topic of the video, just like your title. Someone who does this really well that you might want to copy is Sarah's Day. In her video thumbnails, she uses like little bits of text in her thumbnails to sort of ask a question, just tease a question in your mind. You're like, oh, I need the answer to that. <laughs> so consider actually planning your thumbnail rather than just doing it at random, whatever comes up. Think about what shots you want to get so that you can get that perfect clickable thumbnail. The next reason is you're not giving your viewer enough reason to keep on watching at the start of your video. The start of your videos is incredibly important, especially when you don't have a very visible social proof of hundreds and thousands of subscribers. It's where you really need to deliver on whatever the promise was that you made in the title. For example, if you clicked on a video titled how to lose five kilos in 10 days from someone who you'd never watched on YouTube before and you'd never heard of and in the first 30 seconds they didn't even touch on the actual topic instead they talked about how sorry they were that they hadn't made videos in a little while um, they talked about how cute their dog was they discussed their change in hairstyles it's pretty unlikely that you're gonna stick around for that period of time although how to lose five kilos in 10 days is like that's pretty wild, so maybe you would. <laughs> but for a less compelling title, not so much. Essentially, when people don't hang around on your videos, YouTube can really see that visibly. And if you look in your analytics, you'll be able to see it pretty visibly as well. And what YouTube will do is it'll stop promoting your video because if it can see that a bunch of people are just clicking off after 30 seconds, that means it doesn't want to be promoting your video to other people on the platform. It really doesn't want people clicking off videos and getting bored on YouTube. That's like against YouTube's whole goal. The next reason that people might not be watching your videos is because you're not building a connection with your audience. This one is really important and it's also really hard to start doing, especially when you're just starting on YouTube. When people feel like they connect with you, they feel like they can relate to you, they are more likely to click on your videos when they appear on a weekly basis. And I'm sure that you can confirm this in your own YouTube habits. That you YouTubers that you click on are probably the people that you relate to the most and that you like the most, regardless of the niche. When you're a smaller YouTuber, it is hard to get your personality across because usually you're just getting like comfortable with the camera and you're getting like used to YouTube life. I did actually make a video on how to get your personality across in your videos more. I'll have that linked up here and down below. Some things to think about are creating a style that is very uniquely you. So making sure your backdrop is like super you, all of your visuals are very on brand. Something that will be helpful for you if you want to do this is creating a style guide. I'll have that link down below and up here as well. Another thing that is super helpful is occasionally dropping in your backstory. So for example, on my main channel, I actually quite frequently mention how my personal development journey really started when I read The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Like it had been there in dribs and drabs prior to that book, but that book just like kicked it into gear. It gives my subscribers a hint of who I am and where I came from, and that helps them to connect more with me. Another thing is talking about your interests outside of your YouTube channel, outside of your niche. So Thomas Frank does this really well in a lot of his videos. He has little quips and little quick mentions of kind of nerdy things that he likes outside of his YouTube channel. And I think that it really helps to integrate his personality into his videos more and makes people connect to him on another level. He really embraces his like nerd identity which is excellent. The next reason that people may not be watching your videos is because you're not keeping the pace going. Your videos need to be constantly engaging and constantly moving so that people aren't getting bored as they watch them. Not so that they're like crazy fast paced and insane, but just so much that the viewer isn't getting bored and you're keeping like a really nice pace. If your pacing in your videos is too slow, it's pretty obvious when you have a look at your analytics, you'll actually see like at the end of the points that you're mentioning, people will start to drop off. And then when you mention a new point, it'll go up but by that point in time you'll have lost a whole bunch of viewers regardless. So if you're not sure if this applies to you, monitor your analytics and see whether that's happening. See if you can find any patterns that when people are dropping off and then make changes to your videos to see whether that makes a difference. Another thing that I will mention is make sure that you don't summarize information because summarizing often leads people to just drop off because they're hearing the exact same thing that they've just heard. They don't really need a summary. You can put that in the description if you need to. And of course, keep your visuals moving. So add in that B-roll, make sure that you're like jumping back and forth if you need be. Add in titles change your location, do whatever you need to do, depending on the type of videos that you make to keep your visuals moving. The next one is that you're not providing enough proof to keep people watching. So some 
sometimes I watch videos and I feel like someone is almost reading out of a book rather than talking from personal experience, which is really hard to relate to if you can imagine. For example, if someone's making a video about productivity and they talk about the two minute rule and they kind of talk about it from a clinical perspective as opposed to like, this is my personal experience with that rule, then I find it harder to take on that piece of advice and really care about what's being said. This is something that I've been guilty of in the past with my type of channel. So absolutely no shade. So for example, for me, if I made a video about how to be healthy, which I have done before, but there's very little proof of a health journey in my background or why I'm a legitimate person to be talking about health, people just won't stick around when there isn't that proof there. I'm not saying that you should be mentioning your degrees or your qualifications or although those could be helpful, I'm more saying talk about your personal experience and talk about why you're talking about what you're talking about. Why does it mean so much to you? What life experiences have you had that have made you talk about this topic? If you liked this video, you might like my video on how to get your personality across in your YouTube videos. I'm going to have that linked on the screen and down below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I appreciate you so much and I will see you soon.